This is topic 7.2, climate changes, causes and impacts. Essentially what we're going to be talking about is climate change. Before we go ahead and start that, I wanted to differentiate between climate and weather. People often get them mixed up. Weather is a short-term situation, whereas climate is a long-term, typically over 30 years. So we might say we live in Portland, that the weather is kind of gray and rainy, a little bit on the cold side, but we certainly have our warm days. We've been having a lot more warm days in the summertime lately, days over 90 degrees. So we have to differentiate between climate and weather. You may remember from your first topic in STEM chemistry, that was what they talked about. I often think that the environmental movement made a mistake by talking about both of these in terms of global warming. It gives the impression that things will always be getting warmer, but we certainly have places where it's still very cold and very rainy. What we're really seeing is a overall change in climate, not really a global warming because within any given days, the temperature changes quite a bit. So let's go ahead and take this apart in more detail here. What causes climate change? There's two things we want to look at here is what's going on in the oceans and what's going on in the atmosphere. The oceans tend to be incredibly stable temperature sink. Temperatures really don't change that much. Even if it's a very hot day, the water can still remain very cold. It takes a long time for water to change temperature. So what's going on? Well, there's probably two things that are going on in the oceans. If we look at the circulatory systems here, the movement of temperature, one thing that's changing, and of course, is the depth of the ocean and channels within the ocean. Those create currents and also salinity differences, certainly salinity differences near the coastlines. And we know that osmotically that pulls water, causing it to move in general, in general. Uh, oceans tend to cause stabilization of temperature. So we see along the coastline here of the United States here, the temperature is probably more constant than it would be inland. I definitely saw this when I went up to Alaska. The temperature in Anchorage was a lot more constant than the temperature inland in Fairbanks here. And in general, warm water is moving up from the equator, cold water obviously moving from the poles. The other thing which causes temperature changes on Earth is the atmospheric circulation. What causes air to move? Air is typically moved by pressure changes, which then cause unequal heating. If you watch the news, they'll typically say things like a low pressure front is moving in or a high pressure front is moving in. It's a little complicated, but essentially what's going on is that low pressure fronts are bad weather, rain, wind, cold. High pressure fronts typically move that hot air is being pushed downward, so we're going to have a nice warm sunny day. So we have two things, air and water, which are causing climate change. The big wild card, of course, is how both of these are being affected by human activity. And we've studied this in a previous topic about greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide being the most ubiquitous, ubiquitous one. And in terms of GWP, global warming potential, everything is in terms of carbon dioxide. Methane, you can see, is 23 times. But there's a lot more carbon dioxide than there is methane. So really, it's carbon that's causing the change. The effects of global warming are enormous. Uh, obviously, ice and snow is melting, but we've also seen a change of sea levels. We know that as ice melts, more water gets put into the oceans, but also heat causes the uh, expansion of water molecules that can also cause things to change. But there's a number of indirect things that are happening here. Uh, agriculture is changing, food production, uh, the amount of fresh water that's changing. And we can later talk about political changes, wars, and so forth. 
uh, ecological changes, changes of habitat, uh, movement, migration of fish. Impacts are enormous. Other impacts are more indirect. Uh, tourism, people don't want to go to places that um, don't have nice weather. Ocean acidification, uh, most people think that the ocean is pH 7, it's not. It's about pH 8.1 or 8.2, it's on the basic side. And as we add more carbon dioxide, we create carbonic acid, which changes the pH. Most fish are not uh, able to tolerate changes in pH. A really good example of ocean acidification, of course, is what's happening to coral and the xanthalae, the protista, which is doing photosynthesis within them. Most people think that this white, beautiful coral is, is the way it should look. No, it should not. Coral tends to be brown and greenish, very organic looking, and it's only dying uh, when it takes on that white look. So we have species that cannot simply tolerate these sort of changes. Uh, food supply is definitely changes. Severe storms and droughts, which I think is a better way of thinking about global warming. Uh, it's easier for people to get their hands on severe weather situations and diseases. Now, we've talked before about feedback loops, positive and negative. Just to remind you, positive means we're getting further away from the set point, whereas negative means we're compensating for the stimuli to get back to the set point, your thermostat at home would be a good example of negative feedback. Positive feedback example of climate change would be albedo. Uh, warmer weather melts ice. This decreases the reflection of heat radiation, solar radiation, which then causes the Earth to warm up even more and more ice melts. And so the cycle goes on and on. We could look at negative examples. And so if you have increased CO2, this causes more plant growth, which then reduces the CO2 and gets you back to where you began. Non-human factors in global warming. Well, we've already talked about the production of greenhouse gases. Now, there were always greenhouse gases. When a volcano erupts, obviously that puts a lot of CO2 into the air. But if you look at the long range change in temperature and gases, it's gone up quite a bit in recent years, certainly since the Industrial Revolution. We've already talked about ocean currents. Another thing that's the natural cycle, right, would be a non-human factor. Uh, last ice age, I believe, was about 18,000 years ago. This is a cyclical pattern. Uh, stick around for another, I don't know how many thousands of years, we'll have another ice age, and all these glaciers will come back. So that concludes our discussion on climate change.